All right, Andrew Easton with the ESUPC, and I'm grateful for Nick Ziegler for joining us as well, Nick from ESU5, as we're going to be going through the remote framework for promoting and five that we're going to focus on. Uh, and so our first piece is setting a learning objective, and Nick's going to talk to us about that. So thanks, Nick. Well, excellent. Uh, glad to be here with everybody. So as we look at this uh, chart, this framework for understanding how to put together a remote learning plan, I think step one is to, for everybody to remember you're a great teacher. These steps follow what, you, what you're already doing in your classroom. Step one is, is considering what is that end in mind? What is the objective? Within the context of your remote learning experiences, it's possible that we need to break down some of those larger units into the manageable chunks of information. But that first, first important step is identifying what is the learning goal for students to accomplish. And, and so here again, we might need to take into account what, what model of remote learning are you, are you dealing with? How much time are students going to have with you, maybe in that synchronous setting, or uh, how much time are we expecting them to be spending at home working independently in, on, on this chunk, on this group of tasks? All right, so, so look back at your model, how much time do you have? And then most definitely look at your scope and sequence, um, your district identified scope and sequence. That might be inside of your, your scope and sequence document, or maybe it's inside of those high quality instructional materials, your pacing guide there as well. Again, real important though, is the potential that you need to break down a larger set of objectives so that we're focused around a smaller set, maybe a singular objective. What are the students going to learn? So now what are the students going to do with that? We recommend that you empower your learners through a quick self-assessment that, that could be as simple as how confident are you, you can, in student-friendly language, whatever that learning objective might be. We want to engage kids in, in, in that self-assessment both prior to, at the front end of instruction, and on the back end to help, one, inform their trajectory, where are we going, teacher clarity, but then also on the back end to serve as a spot where kids can reflect, how much did I grow? with the goal, of course, being that they connect the dots between effortful use of effective learning strategies and those learning outcomes. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned there, uh, that self-assessment piece. I think it's really critical, um, as you mentioned, for the sake of teacher clarity and that we're communicating with our learners uh, what the expectation is. And so thanks for sharing that. And we're going to move on here in the next video, so you can go to the next page, uh, which you can exit out of this one and go back over to or access it at the bottom of the page to talk about instruction followed by process, practice, and product. So make sure you check out all that content there.